saw on here. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to talk about what's known about the hospitalized patient with Parkinson's disease. I'm going to talk about the particular and uni somewhat unique challenges of patients with Parkinson's disease while hospitalized. And then I'm going to discuss strategies uh, that uh, can be used by patients uh, to reduce um, the common problems associated um, with um, hospitalization. And then just briefly talk about ideas that are being um, discussed and, and implemented in some places to see if we can reduce complications that occur uh, in the hospitalization of a patient with Parkinson's disease. People with Parkinson's disease are not immune from having other medical problems. Um, and so in many cases, they're admitted to the hospital for, in, in fact, the majority of cases, they're admitted to the hospital for reasons that are unrelated to Parkinson's disease. They can have heart problems, they can have cancers, they can have orthopedic problems that are just wear and tear kinds of injuries that people without Parkinson's disease also have. So arthritic changes to knees and hips and things like that may bring a patient with Parkinson's disease to the hospital. In addition to that, though, other things can um, take a patient to um, the hospital. And these include things that are related to Parkinson's disease, like falling and causing an injury to a limb, or infection that might be related to um, a condition affecting the bladder, or swallowing disturbance causing, making them more prone to uh, pneumonia, for example. And finally, um, our medications put a, an additional burden on patients with Parkinson's disease because they can affect, um, in addition to the um, cognitive effects of Parkinson's disease alone, the, our medications can sometimes um, make people more prone to, um, to confusion and paranoid feelings. So lots of reasons, and we'll try to actually um, set it up in a hierarchical manner later. So. This is why I wasn't here right on time. I had to find something uh, to, to liven up the, the talk here. So, so there's, here's, a, here's a gentleman, because I don't have nice movies like Dr. Edwards, but, but here's, a, here's a person who's in a wheelchair, uh, bandaged up pretty well, um, and has um, uh, the, the bottom line says, if you can't read it, you're in a hospital. What could possibly go wrong? This is the, the, the uh, original. Um, um, uh, t title to the uh, to this cartoon, and 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 you all know that things can go wrong in the hospital, and we want to um, raise awareness so that you can help prevent it, and your family members can. So here's here's the bad news: people with Parkinson's disease are hospitalized more frequently and longer than people who don't have Parkinson's disease. And a really large study uh, looking at admissions in Canada uh, demonstrated this, and it actually sort of um, supported other uh, smaller studies in the United States. In a study of 15,000 patients with Parkinson's disease, there was a 50, almost a 50% or a 44% higher rate of admissions um, for people with Parkinson's disease than the general population. The common reasons for the Parkinson's disease, the most common reasons for them to be hospitalized were um, pneumonia, hip fracture, psychosis, urinary tract infection. So if you can just keep away from all these things, you will be able to stay out of the hospital and keep your rate below the average population. So be on guard. But we'll talk about details about that in a bit. The other thing is, is that the time spent in the hospital, if you get into the hospital, was longer for patients with Parkinson's disease. Uh, in this study uh, in the UK, it was 21 days versus 18 days. So three days is, is, is a bit of extra time in the hospital. And that, and presumably this was probably due to recoveries being slower for whatever reason. And, and figuring that out is actually uh, an area of, um, of interest these days. So going all the way south to Australia, this study looked at exactly what were the reasons for the admission to the hospital. And uh, in this large study, 15% um, of admissions were sort of immediately related to Parkinson's disease. Too much medication, too little medication, et cetera. But that means 85% were not related to immediately to Parkinson's disease. So we need to look at, drill down and look at some of the details here. So 13% were due to falls, 12% due to pneumonia, 
12% due to cardiac issues, 11% to, due to um, bladder and kidney infections, 11% due to gastrointestinal disorders, which could be upper GI, it could be sort of ulcers or um, um, things like that, or it could be lower GI, it could be complications of constipation. 10% had cancer-related admissions, 7% had confusion, 4% had fainting or syncope, 4% uh, had stroke, and 3% had dementia. So you can see there are big chunks of, of non-PD-related reasons why people with Parkinson's disease go into the hospital. Sometimes they're admitted just for surgery. Sometimes it's elective surgery for hip repair, and sometimes it's due to um, repair of a fall, of an injury. Um, and in a German study, they found that those who underwent general surgery, not surprisingly, had more, a more complex hospital course. Uh, and falls were more common during the hospitalization while they were sort of in the post-operative rehabilitation phases. They also found in that study that compared to the patients who didn't have Parkinson's disease, people with Parkinson's disease were more commonly sent to an inpatient rehabilitation or skilled rehabilitation center than uh, patients who, who didn't have Parkinson's disease. Um, and I put this in uh, parenthetically because it wasn't part of the study, but it, you know, we know that all the medications um, that are used with Parkinson's disease can affect cognitive function and the, the post-operative phase. And I think it's worthwhile bringing this up directly that it is possible that if agents, um, if less anesthesia or, um, or local anesthesia is used, it may be possible to reduce some of the post-operative confusion. So if, if, if one is facing surgery and the surgeon and anesthesiologist bring the option of local anesthesia versus general anesthesia, I think it's worth considering and hearing uh, those doctors out about the adv relative advantages uh, to one and the other. So why, why are people with Parkinson's disease getting into the hospital longer and having more complicated stays? Um, I think many people in this room can tell you that they're aware that their symptoms of Parkinson's disease fluctuate, and sometimes they fluctuate due to a reason. They have a cold, their back hurts, their knee hurts, etc. And so that, I'd call that minor or some of the day-to-day -day stressors. But hospitalization is a bigger deal. And I think it's really important for people to know that it is extremely common for people to notice setbacks with their hospitalization and to be uh, cognizant that that's expected, it comes, and there will be improvement uh, after the hospitalization. And they, they just need to um, adjust to that notion um, if they're in the hospital or in the immediate phases leaving the hospital. What else complicates um, hospitalization of patients? Well, they, many patients have an impaired range of motion, and they also have imbalance. And these two factors make it difficult to rehabilitate after a surgery or to uh, get up and be as mobile after a bad infection. And reduced mobilization increases a person's risk for complications, for pneumonias, for blood clots. So these are things that are, that are different about Parkinson's disease patients that put them at greater risk. Another feature is that the autonomic nervous system is also affected. People are um, more likely to have complications of medications or just to have constipation on no medications in the hospital because they're less mobile. And they're also more prone to having drops in blood, blood pressure when they stand up. So a lot of care needs to be um, placed um, to make sure that as you're getting mobilized, if you are hospitalized, that you're not feeling lightheaded or faint and that you don't fall because you don't want to fall after you're recovering from your pneumonia. What else, what other features um, put a person with Parkinson's disease at risk in the hospital? They're off their schedule. Many people here have a fairly careful schedule of taking their medications and the hospital um, routine sometimes doesn't allow for it. There are reasons for during hospitalization where you're not allowed to have any foods or drinks 
And that's a big problem because almost every single one of our medicines for Parkinson's disease is taken orally. Um, and so the hospital schedule and operative um, constraints can often interfere with the normal schedule. Another uh, feature is that some people with Parkinson's disease have cognitive impairment. Or they, and it could be very subtle, it could be moderate, or it could be fairly severe. But putting someone, or taking someone and away from their home, getting them out of their normal routine of medications, um, and then depriving them of sleep, and then adding a touch of other um, medications that can impair cognitive function can really set someone off. So it is fairly common that during hospitalization there is confusion, there is disorientation, there may be hallucinations, um, and there may be paranoid feelings. So that's another feature.